so as usual, I'm going to take you through our game plan here. So I have some Hoya Linearis cuttings that are rooted that need to be added back into the pot. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. I'm also thinking that I might take some more cuttings and repeat that process because, as you all know, I really want to have a full pot of Hoya Linearis. Similarly, I have some cuttings of my Begonia Linda Dawn that I think might be ready to go back in the pot. So I want to check into that and perhaps pot those back in as well. Same thing, I'm just kind of trying to get that Begonia to be more full. And then this one should be interesting. I'm going to attempt to make my own Orchid Mist. I've ordered some fertilizer that I can dilute and make it with, so that will be an interesting experiment. And then I ordered some... Uh, what are they called? Greening pins or floral uh, pins or something like that. I got some of those to try to use instead of the garden tape on my moss poles. So I just wanted to experiment with one of my moss poles and instead of having the tape on just stick the pins in and see if that works for me. Maybe we can do it for this one actually because next I want to extend the pole on my Philodendron Campo Sportuanum. It is climbing right off the top of the pole. I don't think you're going to be able to see, but it's in the cabinet there. And yeah, it really badly needs a moss pole extension. So this is going to be our plan. I hope that you guys are into this. Just going to be a relaxing, fun plant chore afternoon. Let's start with the Hoya Lanier. Okay, so I'm gonna move this off because that's gonna get knocked over. And I'm just gonna remove this hanger so that I can get better, better access here. This is just a random hanger that's not even meant for this pot. I would like to put this in like a macrame or something, but it's still in this kind of like ugly hanger and pot combo. Okay. So right away, like, I'm thinking of propagating this vine, but I think we're gonna do that after. I'm gonna repot, or not repot, I'm gonna add in the cuttings that we have here. Let's take them out of the water. This is what it's looking like. These have been propagating in water for quite a while, but the roots aren't like super crazy because this is hanging at the back of my bedroom. So it really gets minimal light. I'm surprised that it even rooted, to be honest. But yeah, it's actually been doing like not bad. You can see the roots there. It's going to be a lot happier being potted into here. That much I know. Okay, so I have a lot of space to work with here and I'm not sure why the potting mix is so low. I think maybe this was a really small plant at one time and I only filled it up halfway, but I might kind of shift this up a little and then add some more potting mix into here just because think that that will be fine. I can see roots at the bottom too, so it must be really well rooted in here. Let me try to like break this up just a little bit here. I know that Hoyas like to stay a little root bound, so I'm not trying to like upsize it or up pot it or anything. I just want to rearrange it a bit so that I can add in these new cuttings. Okay, I decided to raise the camera up a bit so maybe you can get a better better angle to see what I'm doing here. But I've just kind of like pulled this up a bit to readjust it and then I'm gonna see where I can sneak these in. Now, how many cuttings do I have here? Oh, this one has like a bit of a dead part. I'm gonna, oh boy, okay. I'm just gonna cut some of the stem is mushy on this one. I'm gonna cut that off. Whoops. And then hopefully this will still be okay. The roots are still on there, so hopefully it'll be okay, but I'm just gonna find a spot for it. That guy there. And then next we have this one. It's got such a long stem with roots. So I think I'm just gonna trim that because I don't need that much stem. I'm gonna cut it 
start with here. Then again, just see where I can, I need to cut a little bit more off. Sometimes hard to put cuttings in when they have such a long like stem on them. That'll be better. Okay, I'm sure I can work with that. And then this last one also has a lot of stem happening. I'm gonna try to cut it right here. Now I've only left one set of roots on this one, so that's a little bit riskier, but I guess we'll just cross our fingers. Apparently these root really easily just potting them straight back into the soil. Actually, should I try that today? I might try that today since I want to take more cuttings anyways. Okay, I'm just sanitizing my snippers because I just cut off like that rotted portion. So I don't want to transfer anything over. Now I think I'm just going to cut this whole section off. It's attached to this one weird little vine. Let's cut it right there. Maybe we'll get new growth off of this one. I don't know. So for this, we need to cut this up a little bit further. Um, oh, got to be careful about the sap. That stuff is so hard to get off if you get the sap on something. Okay, I think I'm going to cut it there and then in the middle here. So that leaves us with these two separate ones. I think I'm going to cut once more here and then that should be pretty good. I'm just going to cut this like little dead portion off. Okay, so I'm just going to, I guess, sneak these back in. I'm very curious to see if these will survive. I'm assuming they will. Is that backwards? I think that's laying a different way than the others. There we go. This one. There we go. I'm gonna have to get more potting mix to kind of fill this up again. And then the last one, this way, just gonna put it like so. Okay, perfect. Be right back with my potting mix. Okay, I'm trying to scoop from the more denser section of my potting mix just because this is a thirstier Hoya doesn't like to dry out, it will drop the new growth if it dries out at all. And also I just want these cuttings to be able to be stabilized in here. So let's just fill her up. Just being really gentle because there's um, you know, so many new, fresh, little baby roots on our cuttings. Oop. Okay, I don't want there to be too much in here. Just gonna kind of brush soil into place. Okay, this looks quite good to me. I'm just going to go and give it a thorough water now. Okay, I have her in the sink. I just wanted to show you how long she is. She's actually quite long now. So the next time I propagate, I am going to be taking some cuttings from the bottom here just to take some length off and keep adding them into the top.
right, I'm just gonna let her drip dry for a few minutes here, but I'm already just really happy with how this is looking. Like the top of the pot is so much more full and it's just gonna look amazing once this grows out. So I'll definitely be keeping you guys updated on the progress of this. Okay, while we're all set up here, I'm gonna take a look at my Begonia Linda Dawn's roots. It's been water propagating for a couple of weeks now. Begonia usually root quite quickly for me. And yes, we do have some roots. Yay. I don't know how well you can see. It's kind of hard to show them. There we go. Yeah, that's definitely enough roots to um, pop in the pot. Honestly, I feel like begonia are another one that I could just like propagate right in the soil, but I've never tried it. They just root so well in water that I usually go that route. And this is the mother plant. She actually has tons of new growth already from when I chopped her. So you can see I cut her in a couple spots, but for example, this is one right here. You can see the cut and she's already pushing out new growth right there and branching out. So that's really nice to see. Same with this little one down here. I completely cut that one back just to a stump right here and she's already pushing out a new leaf. So that's amazing. This begonia still isn't growing to my liking. She's still giving me super spotty foliage. I used to talk about this a lot. I haven't really talked about her in a while, but she's still giving me super spotty foliage. Even the new growth is very spotty and she's not really supposed to look like that. She's supposed to look more like this leaf just like a very dark foliage which is the look that i want but i just can't stop her from giving me the spots it doesn't matter about lighting i've had people comment that it might be a temperature thing so i don't know i've been meaning to actually look into that more i don't know if she needs to be in cooler or warmer conditions maybe warmer because she isn't like probably a kind of cool spot she's not near a, a heat vent or anything like that and she's not in a cabinet but I'll probably play around with that eventually. If you do have any knowledge on that though, please leave it down below. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and pop these cuttings in here. I'm just gonna make a couple little holes actually. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. This is a big enough planter that I think I'll be able to just stick these, these guys in here. Okay, how many is there? Three? Yeah, three, perfect. Um, which way is she facing? This way, so... I'm just gonna pop that one in. And just kind of bury it. And this one... Same thing. This is like very, very simple. Ooh, this cutting looks a little rough. It looks a little rough. I'm not sure why this was happening to some of the leaves. Do you see that? They all just like look weird. Like, what is that? Don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of potting mix in just to kind of make sure that they're all covered. They're not gonna be uprooted on me like my micans. Oop, oh my gosh, I just pulled it out a little bit. So once these grow a bit, this plant is gonna look very full. I just wish I could figure her out to get her to grow the way that I really want her to grow, you know? I can't find much information on these Begonia Linda Dawn. They're, they're not like super popular or anything, so I don't know. I could probably stake her too, to be honest. Like, look, she's totally just flopping down here. Let me go see what I have for a trellis. Okay, so I do have one of these trellises. I actually really like these for Begonia. I used to grow my Begonia Maculata on a 
on probably this exact trellis actually. Um, or no, I gave that begonia away with this trellis. So the same one, but not the exact same one. Um, so I'm just going to stick it into the pot. Hopefully we're not gonna totally destroy all those fresh roots we just potted in there, but I think it'll be fine. And then I'm just going to secure to the trellis. Okay, I'm gonna come sit in front and hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna be using this jewelry cord. This is just like a cotton rope um, from Michaels. It's just leftover from one of my chokers. Um, I just decided to keep it because I thought it would come in handy for stuff like this. Uh, and I'm choosing to go with this over my plant velcro just because this is a darker foliage plant. It's not like super bright green, so the plant velcro would be really obvious, um, whereas I think this is just gonna be a little bit more inconspicuous. So now I just have to figure out how I'm going to attach her. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So when you first put a plant on a trellis or a stake or even a moss pole, it takes some time for the plant to kind of settle in and face all the leaves out and just look nicer. So, you know, it looks okay right now, but it's definitely gonna look better in a few weeks. Just happy that she has some support now. So that is great. All right, I just put her back in her spot. I gave her water and then I put her back in her spot. So she's down here. I'm thinking that she might need a warmer spot and that's why her foliage isn't coming out like this deep green color. Um, she's here right now in this little corner, but I'm thinking of moving her to the Millsbow wide because this cabinet gets very warm. This is like the warmest planty area of my home because my heat vent is behind it. So it heats this up really nicely. So I don't know. Let me know what you think if you have any insight on that. All right, so now I'm going to be attempting to make my own orchid mist. Now, if you're not familiar with orchid mist, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm trying to recreate. I use this on my Hoya. It's really good for encouraging growth and encouraging blooming. You just spray it on them. It's just like a foliar fertilizer. And honestly, it works amazing. But these are like seven, eight dollars per bottle. So it gets expensive and you go through this really quickly. Plus you're just like buying a lot of plastic. So I just think it makes sense for me to make my own. So that's what I'm going to be attempting to recreate. I just have a tiny bit left in here. Um, and I'm gonna be using this to do, oh yeah, did I mention this is a 0 0.02 for the MPK on this for all of them. And then this is what I'm gonna be using to recreate it, which is just a 20-20-20 fertilizer. I'm gonna be following directions that were given to me by one of my plant friends on Instagram. I'll put her username and link her down below as well. Her plant Instagram is amazing. Her collection is phenomenal and she's just super nice and knowledgeable. So yeah, I'm going to be um, following following the, the message that she sent, sent me. Oh. Okay, it just comes in a bag. Interesting. I was expecting it to be like in a container, but it's just in a bag. That's fine. Comes with this scoop. Oh, that's cool. So the smaller one is for indoor and then the bigger one is for outdoor. Little twist tie to secure it after. 
I just picked this up on Amazon, by the way. I'm sure that you can find this pretty much anywhere, just like at your local garden center, but I will link it if you are interested. So I'm just gonna follow the directions and mix this. So it's just gonna be one scoop, one small scoop to four liters. So I'm gonna use just one of my distilled water jugs. Okay, so I have this distilled water. I've literally had this forever. I use it to water some of my terrarium begonias, but honestly, I got kind of lazy about it and just started watering them with tap water. Um, probably shouldn't do that, but yeah, we're gonna use this for my fertilizer now. Okay, should I like have my mask on? I don't know if this is gonna be like coughing everywhere. All right. my little scoop there let's put it in here oh whoa crazy okay i'm gonna fill this up it's not all the way so i'm just gonna fill it up a little bit more i'm gonna mix it a little i guess looks like it's already dissolved like super quickly okay so that's what it looks like so far i'm gonna close this up Okay, I feel like that should be like close enough to four liters. I don't really know. Is it supposed to be all the way up? Probably. Okay, that should be good enough. So now let me figure out what we need to do next. Okay, so this I just mixed up as per the instructions, the regular fertilizer instructions on the box. So now we need to dilute this further. We need to have one mil of this solution to a thousand mils of water. So we're gonna need to put four milliliters of this into four liters, another four liter milk jug or distilled water jug. Do you follow? Okay, another jug. All right, so four milliliters is equal to roughly 0.8 of a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna like, I don't have anything to precisely measure, I don't think. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and put like almost a full teaspoon, but not quite. So I'm just gonna scoop it out of here, I guess. You could do this a lot more accurately if you were, you know, trying to be serious about it, but I'm not too worried. Okay, so I'm just going to put this much and assume that that is going to be correct. <laughs> now I just have to fill this up with water. Then we're done. Then I can refill my, my mister. That was way easier than I thought it was gonna be, honestly. I should have done this a long time ago. All right, now the last step is just to refill my bottle here. Wow, amazing. I'm gonna have like, I'm never gonna run out of this, seriously. That box of fertilizer cost me, I think $10 too. And just one of these is almost $10. So that's such a huge savings. Perfect, I'm so excited. I'm not gonna use this right now because this is a, a nighttime plant care thing for me so that I don't burn my plants, even though it's dark out right now, but most of my plants are under grow lights anyways. But yeah, super excited about this. Okay, so next we're gonna do the Camposporchuanum moss pole extension and then I think I'm gonna try to pin um, the vines on with my new pins. <laughs> I'll show you these once we, once we get there. But I'm gonna whip up a moss pole super quickly. I don't think I'm really gonna show it because I feel like I show that in literally like every second video. So yeah, I'll meet you guys back here once it's all ready to be attached. Okay, I'm back. I have my philodendron Camposportoanum. Um, so as you can see, he definitely needs an extension. Look at how nice that leaf is though. I mean, he has had, probably has still spider mites. Um, so the leaves aren't perfect, but honestly, I'm super happy with this one, this is probably the biggest leaf he's given me by far, actually. 
Um, yeah, it looks really good. It's a fungus gnat too. Okay, so here is the moss pole extension. What the heck? Oh my gosh, it's the, the scraps of Linearis because I'm using the same botting mat and I didn't clear it off. Um, so here is the extension, some space to attach it right here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully it's a nice fit. Seems very hit or miss for me. Okay, so I'm just going to carefully place it over top. Uh-oh. Okay, that actually looks like it fits really well, as far as I can tell. Yeah, that looks really good. Thicker moss poles are so much sturdier too. I really prefer this size. This is 16 squares of the mesh, if anyone is interested. So I'm just going to zip tie that together and then we'll pin these vines onto the new pole. Okay, so these are the pins that I got that I'm speaking about. So I'm going to try to secure the vines with these. Okay, let's see Oop, how this goes. So, I don't know if it's supposed to be this way or this way. I'm gonna try it this way, I guess. Just gonna slide it in and secure. Cool. Honestly, this plant doesn't really need it. It finds the moss pole super well, um, but we'll just we'll just use them anyways. Let's do another one right here. Just want to see what it looks like the other way. If that's any better. Honestly, I don't think it matters, but that looks good to me. All right, great, so this guy is all done. I actually might take the green tape off just because I don't think he needs it. Like he's really well rooted into this pole already. So I'm just gonna take that off. Oh yeah, he's like attached. So I guess today is going to mark the beginning of his transition outside of the cabinet. Um, for now at least. I might end up putting him back in once I redo my mills bow so that I can have taller plants in it. But for now, he's gonna come out. So wish him luck in his journeys. Let me just make sure there's no other vines that need to be pinned on here because there is some smaller vines that are growing up on the bottom from pop propagations that I've put in. So actually, let me move the camera down. We might use a couple more pins. This wicker thing that I'm filming on top of is very unstable that's why this is like looking crooked okay so I'm just gonna pin some of these guys let's do right there okay great and this one Great, let's check the other side. Yeah, those are so much more minimal and just look so much better than the green garden tape. I mean, I love the garden tape and I always will just because it's so um, handy, but it's definitely not the prettiest for this type of purpose. This leaf is stuck. Is that rooted? Yep. Okay, and then there's a couple right here too. Ooh, this plant has a lot of vines that are starting to take off. That's great. I'm gonna put it right 
here. And then one more, I think. Right here. There we go. Okay. Amazing. All right, so that crosses off those two and that brings us to the end of the video. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Plant Chores. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I'm actually gonna be camping when this goes live and I'm not gonna have service, so I'll respond to comments whenever I get home. But thank you so much for being here. Make sure you subscribe for more planty content and I will see you in the next one. Bye.